Hello and welcome to Jam from Education Day 2024. We're absolutely thrilled to have educators, IT professional and partners join us from all over the world for today's event. Now today's session is all about showcasing our latest innovations to help you manage and secure your Apple devices more efficiently. While still, still empowering and engaging teachers, students and IT teams to help you to create dynamic technology enhanced learning environments. Now we're also really excited to hear from some of our incredible customers today who will share their experiences and strategies for implementing technology rich environments, of course, using Apple and Jam solutions. Now we do want today to be as engaging and as interactive as possible. So please don't hesitate to drop your questions into the chat. Now I want to be really respectful of everyone's time today so without further ado, let's kick things off with our first speaker. Introducing to you Senior Product Marketing Manager for Education, Matt Pullen. Matt, good afternoon and welcome. I think we're having a little trouble with your sound at the moment. Okay, apologies. Uh, we seem to have some audio issues with, with Matt. So if you just bear with us a few seconds and we should have that sorted for you. Matt, coming back in now. Let's try that again. Yes, Did we you have you now, there. Matt. <laughs> there Loud we go. Clear. <laughs> awesome. Uh, Matt, I will hand it over to your capable hands for the next 30 minutes or so. And I'll okay, join you again thanks, soon. Thanks. So welcome everyone uh, to our session today. Uh, we've recently had our Jamf Nation user conference um, in the US. Um, and we wanted to give you some of our updates from that, um, as well as kind of give you some insights into some of the things that we're looking at at Jamf going forward to, as Craig said, really make sure that we empower uh, your journey with Jamf. Um, kicking off with our notion around successful deployments. Um, we know that uh, education is still one of the industries that is essentially can exist without technology. Uh, many educators feel that they can teach without using devices. IT skills can be taught in specialist sessions. So why do they actually need to be available in all lessons and to all learners? Well, we know that through deployment discussions around the role of technology, often you need to start with that focus on learning outcomes and meeting modern day needs of the industry for students that will be entering the workplace. Often those leadership discussions aren't focused on how, but more on the why, uh, a grand vision for change that technology can potentially promise. But how is that um, essential in order for uh, to make it work? What, what do we need in order to make it work? And more importantly, I guess, to make that stick in the classroom so that it changes behaviors and gets full buy-in from all of our stakeholders. So the purpose is usually straightforward, support, learning and impact on the student outcomes. But then you have to take into account the people, the teachers, the students, the parents, IT admins, curriculum leads. All of those have a stake in the process, um, but they all have a stake for very different reasons. So we know that that successful deployment needs to meet both that overall vision, whilst also ensuring that the people that have to do it have their individual needs met as well. Um, simply throwing devices into a classroom um, just results in well-managed devices um, that sit unused. IT must go beyond that and really think about how not to just be operational, but be purposeful. Now, we're proud at Jamf to have a, a huge education community that we support. We help over 40 million students globally succeed with Apple um, across 40,000 schools via one-to-one -one or shared devices. And we're so grateful to this community that we serve. Um, and we want to continue to support these educators and IT admins, parents and students as we move forward. Um, the way that students learn and the skills they need are hugely changing. And we want to make sure we keep pace with that because learning isn't straightforward. We don't just follow a single script or even create a few individual scripts that meet general needs. Every learner is unique and so is the way that they learn. So this brings us huge challenges to classrooms, but one that we must meet if we want all students to succeed. So what does success look like to the individual as opposed to the institution? There could be a huge difference in what that statement means. 
the role of technology unlocks potential, but only if it's used effectively um, and also used all of the time in lessons. Now, these are just some of the top skills required for the modern workplace as identified by the Future of Jobs report from the World Economic Forum. Now, whilst we can never know what the jobs of the future will really look like, we can definitely try to develop learners that have diverse skill sets that may be more in line with what is required based on the emergence of technologies that are driving change in what employers are looking for. That traditional notion of training for a particular job isn't going to meet the needs of today's or even more importantly, tomorrow's learners. We can see that there's an increased importance in skills that require thinking skills, innovation skills and personal initiative. And students need to understand the wealth of knowledge and content available, but also what to do with it all, what is important and what is not important. And even though we can Google the answer to anything, what do we do with that content that can ultimately make a difference in our lives going forward? And the role of technology in education has been rapidly changing from that traditional approach that focuses on just teaching IT skills to a process of integrating technology to support learning itself, providing access to learning for students in new ways and understanding of the role of technology and how it plays that really important part in supporting the whole learning process. We can enhance learning by using technology to support learning across various subjects and personalize that individual education experience for students. And when we look at purposeful deployment, we're talking about meeting the needs of all students with IT threading through all levels to ensure that all people are supported and the purpose is ultimately met. Now that purpose may change based on the scale of your deployment, your overall goals, the learning and teaching approaches, your ideology of leadership or many other factors. But what remains is the need to meet the purposes with an approach that removes the need for specialist IT knowledge in the classroom so that anybody that touches the device, and this is the point of failure in most systems, can work with those devices without needing to be an expert or having to call on experts all the time. That's when people become confident to embed it into any lesson so students succeed with technology. A successful deployment goes way beyond just the technology. It supports that learning and teaching through the people that interact with the devices the teachers, the students, curriculum leads, and even the parents and carers. So when you deploy with a purpose, you can transform learning and teaching and unlock that huge potential and provide equitable outcomes and opportunities for students. Now, this is just a range of stakeholders that are impacted by any technology deployment. Each person needs a single purpose to empower student success, but also all of their individual needs as well. And by e meeting each need with technology, it's more than just deploying the device. It's about providing a device that supports and develops what that person can achieve. Otherwise, the device gets, gets put down or seen as a distraction to learning. Our purposeful deployment sees that device as an enhancement to learning and teaching beyond the technology, so anything is possible. In its basic form, without a true purpose, technology merely acts as a substitute for what's already been done. Or oftentimes, it gets in the way of learning because it adds an extra layer of complexity. It's just not easy to use when you put it at this level. So if you strive for a redefinition of what technology can do in the classroom, the technology changes the approaches and outcomes, and they become ingrained in the fabric of your institution saving you time, saving you money, and providing those new opportunities that were not possible before we introduced technology. Now, purposeful deployment is our vision for transforming learning that reimagines classrooms and streamlines that IT workflow. With Apple and Jamf, schools ensure that every user has access to personalized devices that deliver privacy and security that ultimately empower student success. And as we move through this process, we build on that foundation with security and engagement tools to ultimately build that empowerment for end users to focus on student learning outcomes with technology. 
And at JAF, we meet these purposes with our solutions that support management, security, engagement, and empowerment in that process. Whether you're using iPad, Macs, Apple TV, even Apple Watch, Jamf has a solution to meet your individual needs. And when those solutions get into the hands of end users, we ensure IT support goes beyond the classroom door. We believe that IT admins are the superheroes of the classroom when it comes to technology. They support educators, students, and even parents with the apps that help with engagement, manage distractions, and keep the focus firmly on learning. So when we bring this all together, we empower our users at all stages, meaning that vision for Apple technology in your institution really does become a reality. So let's take a walk through that journey that showcases what a purposeful deployment looks like and where Jamf supports on that journey all the way through. Now you start with that decision to purchase your Apple devices Based on that knowledge, they're going to be used in a transformative way to impact on learner outcomes. You set them up using Apple School Manager, Jamf School, to ensure they're managed effectively, personalized to the users, both the educators and the students, and can be easily supported with those updates that IT need to determine that safety of those devices. Identity is also supported at this stage uh, with your legacy systems, whether that's Google or Microsoft, making sure that you have that functional tool in, a, in order to keep everybody connected across all levels. And then we start to think about the classroom solution. This is really important and where Jamf believes we go that bit further with technology. Tools like Jamf Teacher, Jamf Student, Jamf Parent work really well alongside tools like Apple Classroom to make sure educators are empowered in their classrooms with the tools so that they manage the class for exactly how they want their classroom to be set up. Removing those distractions so the focus is on learning and not on the technology itself. Now we can engage and empower with those tools alone, but we also have tight integrations with other tools. GoodNotes, Shobi, Caligo, meeting the device purpose that you might have whether that's assessment and feedback, developing handwriting skills, digital note-taking, or with the use of Trilby TV to extend the role of classroom screens to support independent learning as well. All of these tight integrations mean that teachers have the tools ready at their fingertips to get the purpose of the device firmly on teaching and learning at all times. But we must go beyond simply just managing devices and layer in this security that also makes sure that we're confident that both students' privacy and security is in place. They're not going to be harmed by inappropriate content, whilst at the same time, we're making sure that the network is also protected from malicious attacks, from malware, phishing, etc. These are forever on the grow in education. We are seemingly a bigger target all the time. But we want to make sure that wherever students are using devices, be that in school or at home, those devices and individuals are protected at all time. And finally, we want to make sure that we empower teachers by supporting with those programs offered by both Jamf and Apple to ensure they're prepared to take advantage of the benefits of having these devices in their classrooms. Now, Jamf solutions go further than just the products and integrations to, with wider solutions to meet your individual purposes, not just as a deployment and management of the apps, but with those configurations that save time and further empower educators to use the tools to support learning. Whether your purpose is on that handwriting, developing maths, supporting students with assessment, or probably all of the above. Jamf integrations make that process seamless so educators focus on what they need to focus in the classroom. Now we can do this for an individual school or we can do this for trusts or even wider city deployments. The focus here is that we take you on that complete journey from that initial choice to have Apple devices all the way through to having that impact on student outcomes. Jamf will support you at every step of the way. As like we said, the IT admins here are absolute superheroes, but when they work together closely with those classroom teachers and the curriculum leaders, that's when you're going to really have a successful deployment. 
So let's take a look at what's new at Jamf. As we said last week, we had our Jamf Nation user conference. We managed to talk a lot about our new strategies going forward and our messaging, but also some new updates to some of our products. Center stage was really our purposeful deployment messaging, making sure that people really fully understand what Jamf offers beyond just its management tools, all the way through to that ultimate goal of empowering all users and all stakeholders with the use of Apple devices. And if we start by just taking a look at some of those manage and secure updates, we believe in making things seamless and simple as possible for all of our users. We know that time is precious in education. We've worked really hard to enhance the experience to save you time. And these essential Apple services enable these improvements to both save you time and enable us to go even further with future developments. Starting with Jamf Safe Internet and on-device content filtering and on-device security. These provide robust protection for iOS and iPadOS devices. On-device ensures content filtering policies are applied directly on the device, maintaining those restrictions regardless of network connection. Now, this is great because it blocks inappropriate content and ensures consistent protection in any environment. And additionally, the on-device security extends the protection by proactively blocking threats such as that malware and phishing, ensuring a secure browsing experience. Now, these features are managed through Jamf's cloud-based console to make it really easy to control and report. Next, time-based policies. This is probably one of the most requested uh, solutions to bring to our Jamf Safe Internet. It brings the flexibility to now dynamically adjust content filtering based on specific times of the day. This feature allows schools to tailor their filtering solutions to different use cases, such as relaxing restrictions after school hours to enable more general usage of the device. And by aligning content policy with students' varying needs and schedules, Jamsafe Internet ensures that devices can support both academic and personal development without compromising safety or productivity. Now, we know that devices go home at the end of the day and often become that main technology for all people in the household to use. That's why time-based policies has been so requested, because that device then can be tailored specifically to individual needs when that device gets home. Looking at then some of our management uh, updates, we've now started to look at managed software updates via DDM, or Declarative Device Management. Now, this provides a more seamless experience for our IT admins to meet the needs of education. As we know, students in classrooms do not wait whilst the device gets an update. With managed updates, you're able to ensure that those devices meet the compliance you need, but at a time that does not impact on students' learning and destroy that trust that you've built up around the use of technology. Now, this is just the first step in bringing more efficiencies to schools and institutions the work behind the scenes with our teams makes us uh, enable us to bring new features as Apple then start to deploy them. We also want to focus that we have developed hugely around Mac management in Jamf School as well. We're continuing to support those large scale deployments to support both those iPad and Mac usage cases globally. And finally, something that was really exciting, excitedly accepted whilst we released this on stage was dark mode in Jamf School. Now, not only does this make it look a little bit easier on the eye, but it also meets those accessibility needs of many of our users. So it looks cool and also helps people that have specific needs around accessibility. And then finally, as we look to engage and empower all of our stakeholders in the use of Apple devices in the classroom, we're proud to continue the development of the tools that allow IT admins to go even further with their deployment and ensure confidence and efficiency in classrooms around the world. First up, streamlined user interface in Jamf Teacher. We now have lesson templates that make it even easier for teachers to just set up student devices for exactly what they need in the classroom. By adding in the ability to predefine the websites, the apps and restrictions that you want and simply just press start and have all of your student devices set up without those distractions in place. 
that really brings confidence to teachers. And when all teachers are confident in using technology, you could really start to think about bringing equity across all areas of your teaching and learning output. We've also integrated the Apple EPP list of applications so that teachers can now easily search through those tailored solutions for education. And most of the time, these opportunities often include professional learning. So it's a really great place for teachers to start to understand the power of the right tool for the right situation in their classrooms. Simply then, they request this through Jamf School and IT admins deploy that app onto the devices where it's specifically needed. And finally, we've made some significant enhancements to the Jamf Educator Portal. New opportunities to take your training further with wider links to a teacher forum where you can engage with other educators using Jamf products and have a look at use cases where they've integrated technology, not just with Jamf products, but also with those wider integrations that we mentioned earlier. This really helps you build out your unique solution to meet your unique deployment needs. Now, please do, if you haven't already, visit educator.jamf.com to help find more information about all of this. So as you can see, lots of developments, lots of new messaging, we're here to meet everybody's need, all those stakeholders in education, as you start to deploy technology for that ultimate purpose of empowering students to succeed. And with that, I'll hand it back over to you, Craig. Thank you, Matt. Uh, purposeful deployment, I'm sure that's something that will resonate with, with many people in today's audience. And also great to see our continued innovation as we continue to help meet those evolving needs, as you rightly say. Now, I'm excited to slightly shift gears now uh, with today's panel session. So I'm really excited to welcome our panelists today, uh, Cinder Peterson from Larvik Municipality and Dan Davis from the Woodlands Multi Academy Trust. Good afternoon, gentlemen. It's great to have you here. Thanks for, for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Awesome. Great to, great to see you both. Now, I thought it'd be great if we could maybe just start with some, some introductions, maybe tell me a little bit about what your role is and a little bit about your context and, and where you work in, in the world. So, Cinder, if we start with you, if that's okay. Yes, I'm from Norway, a Larvik municipality. I'm an IT team leader for uh, the school, a school team. Uh, we have uh, a few 4,000 iPads in uh, primary school. Thank you. And Dan? So I work for a group of primary schools in London. We have five primary schools now, and we are all one-to-one -one iPad from the earliest years of school right through until they leave us to go to secondary school. Um, and I work as an assistant head teacher across the five of our schools, supporting teaching and learning in the classroom through the use of technology. Amazing. I think it's great to have kind of both perspectives on this from the IT side and also from on the teaching and learning side. So interested to see how, how those two worlds kind of come together. Now, M Matt mentioned the importance of having a purpose to the deployment. Uh, I'm interested to know what the, what the vision or what the purpose was behind your individual uh, initiatives uh, and really what was the desired educational outcomes you were hoping to achieve dan I'll, I'll start with you this time yeah of course so i'm i'm really lucky to have been involved in this project from the start i'm not from an it background i wasn't a computing teacher or anything of that sort from the beginning um, i was just really lucky to get involved in supporting um, supporting some of our children with either additional needs or specific barriers to learning. Uh, some of the communities that we serve have quite a lot of um, children and mm -hmm. families just didn't seem to be getting on particularly well with a more traditional and typical approach to education that the school system was was, was offering primarily. So we really wanted to try, try and break that and start looking at how technology could remove some of those barriers to learning. And we, we very quickly found ourselves on the, the iPad route for, for many, many reasons. Um, and naturally then, well, how can we empower those teachers, which is where our jump journey started. Um, yeah. So that was our real vision. How can we strip away some of those barriers to learning for our for our children? Amazing, oh, great to hear. And Sender uh, in, in Larvik? Yeah, uh, we have uh, had the iPads uh, from uh, 2016 and before that, 
was uh, beta testing uh, a few years. Uh, so we have a lot of experience with iPad and used a previous MDM, uh, but we we were lacking uh, functionality and uh, with the times changing and uh, more demanding and uh, teachers wanted more control and be more independent and the parents wanted to have a control them when the iPads came home and uh, a lot of other uh, functionality uh, we were wanting and were looking for and uh, that's when uh, we came across uh, Jamf and uh, uh, it met our needs and uh, we have been very happy with it. We have recently hear. started, uh, that's a, a thing to mention. Um, it was now in August, we um, enrolled uh, many, many thousand iPads into Jamf. So it's been a very good uh, uh, project. Yeah, no, I'm excited to hear more about that, actually. So uh, the question I was going to ask next was, that, you know, how has Jamf supported these efforts? I, I know in Sender in, in, in Larvik, we were pretty hands on of how, how we helped. Um, you undertook something that uh, a service that we've got called a premium pilot. I wonder if you can maybe just tell us a little bit more about that. Uh, yeah, so uh, we started the project before the summer. Uh... We used 60 days uh, from the start to uh, going live. Um, and uh, it was intense with uh, good help from Tubi and other Jamf uh, partners and uh, um, our uh, Norwegian contacts. Um, and uh, Premium Pilot uh, did a good uh, system, did the project and uh, started, uh, uh, yeah, started with the settings connecting everything with Apple and uh, start, uh, we set dates to when we needed to revoke the license in the previous and um, to have it yep. ready for the live date and yeah, a good plan uh, for everything and uh, set up the locations, the schools, the policies and uh, yeah, had some test iPads before we uh, a few weeks before the live date, we changed the, if you like, if you wipe the iPad now, you will end up in the new one because we were kind of ready uh, before the live date as well. Um, so we did have uh, some few iPads uh, that enrolled into Jamf and it worked uh, then. Um, it worked now in August with uh, no problems. So uh, 60 days, been, yeah, uh, was, uh, yeah. quite time skill, yeah. Very yeah, short time scale. typically, uh, what uh, what uh, Jamf told is uh, typically ninety days, but we wanted to do it in sixty because then we did uh, summer vacation and uh, all the students and teachers are taking vacation. We wanted to have it live before the vacation started, so we could uh, yeah just have it ready before. Amazing, yeah, and no, incredible that it was turned around so quickly. I think testament to not only to, to Jam's help, but obviously uh, yourself and, and your and your team there. Dan, I know you did something yeah. similar actually because you, you've been a Jamf customer for 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 quite a while now, and you started on on Jamf Pro and you moved across also to to Jamf School more recently. Yeah. And I think that was also driven by some of the workflows and some of the apps as well, wasn't it? Yeah, completely. Well, whilst um, having the IT team in the background and support from <clears throat> some of the people over at Jamf, making sure that background setup was all right. What we really wanted to do was empower the, the teachers in the classroom. So yeah. whilst we, we know that the, the kind of safeguarding issues and the profiles and everything in, in, in that place was set up correctly in the background by, by the IT team, we really wanted to give as much control over what was happening in the classrooms to the teachers they're the they're the professionals in the room with the children they know what their what their teachers need there and then in the moment um and to really help focus the focus the students on the task that we were asking them to do particularly when you think around creativity if that's something that you're approaching a creative teaching or learning opportunity just stripping that device back, right back to give them though that handful of creative apps that they know that they can access then just really helps focus the children getting get involved in what it is that they want to be learning um and having those different levels 
between the the types of accounts that you can have within within Jamf School down to letting the teachers have access to Jamf Teacher or any of the other educators working with them has just been incredible. I mean, it can be a little bit controversial that IT sometimes don't want to give too much control away. It's like trying to balance out well. I want yeah, to. It, it's a, <laughs> it, it is a, it needs to be a good balance. But yes, that's yes. Uh, the, what Dan is saying is is like such a huge relief for IT uh, mm. that we see now in uh, after we enrolled into Jump is like the time that uh, already has been saved for from the IT perspective that the teachers and the students and the parents have uh, each their app, the teacher app, the parent yeah. app, and the student app, and that the teacher can control it with the Jump teacher and with Apple Classroom. Uh, it's time saving for every line in every part. In part. It's, uh, it's, really, it's really encouraging yeah, yeah. to hear. Even, even when, you, when you think when you think back to um, I think think about us before we started using Jump. If a a teacher or a member of staff would want a program or an app or anything in particular installed, it would have to go to the IT team, wait for that to be actioned, and then come all the way back. Whereas sometimes in the moment when you're in the lesson, you need that there and then to really really take the learning where it's about to go in the classroom. So having the IT um, side of things, really looking at the data that's collected by different apps and having your kind of GDPR or data protection policies in place to allow them to be within the system and letting the teachers pick and choose which ones are right for that lesson there and then in the moment without having to have that conversation. It's just, even though it seems to separate the conversation yes. um, physically a little bit, what it's actually doing is the two teams working a lot better together to get the end products because like we said earlier when we were talking about um, that successful deployment. It's about those outcomes yeah. for the children at the end of the day, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. And Sandra, I see you yeah. nodding away there. It's, it's great to see the alignment there between between IT and and also the, the, the education leadership team. So it's fantastic to see across different different countries and different contexts, but some similar goals in place. Now, you, you both mentioned uh, teacher and classroom, I think. So are you both using both apps uh, concurrently? And how does that how does that work in practice because it's something that we talk about teacher being uh, complementary to apple classroom i just wonder maybe dan if you can start us off there with how you've adopted both and and, and how staff have felt about that you know is it how have you managed to get them to adopt both the the thing about both apple classroom and jump teacher is that their their interface is really clean and easy to use so mm not actually that much professional development that's needed for mm -hmm. for teachers um once they've got it in their hands and you have just a few members of teaching staff going oh hang on a minute i can do this myself without having to go through all these other steps it really quickly quickly rolls itself out and uh whilst having some very very basic set parameters around some of our other policies in terms of things like acceptable use policies um yeah. we've really just left it to the teachers to go and use this how in the way that's right for you in the, and in the way that's yeah right in that lesson there and then um yeah i mean it's great it's just like or you just kind of put it out there tell some people about it and organically it just it just gets out there and people start start picking it up so it's not felt like it's been forced upon them you must use this app it's they've seen absolutely. the 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 benefits of it absolutely not because we know those devices are safe because like we we say about that that two-sided approach We've got our yeah. jump school side of things, making sure that all the protective systems and everything else is in place. They're on the right profiles and the networks and everything else. And then the teachers can go, hang on a minute, what's right? What's right for us today? What are we learning about? How are we feeling we're going to take this? Where are we going to go with it? And and the simplicity of them, you don't need to be an IT expert or have a really good knowledge mm -hmm. about device management systems or anything like that to, to go, oh, I'm doing English lesson today. I know these are the apps that are going to be perfect for me. Let's just start that lesson. Go. Yeah. And you have the templates you can uh, already have set up and make before the class uh, class starts. And yeah, yeah. it is what uh, what you are saying. Like all the teachers are different, uh, have a different approach to IT and technology. And some use many features in both that classroom and teachers. Some use only teachers. It depends on how how students you you have. Do you need to see their screen? Or and then you want to use the Apple Classroom, or or you use the Jamf Teacher and just block Safari, 
block certain apps, allow certain apps. Yeah, it's a different scenario for each class and and teachers. Yeah, yeah. I think I think that's really key. It's so adaptable. I think it's great that you've got the lesson templates. You know, they're, they're shareable as well. So if you've got those teachers that are more IT savvy or more confident, you know, they can they can share them with colleagues as a bit of a starting point to to get started. But yeah, I, I like the fact that it's not mandated. It's it's seen as something that, that can be used in various ways, whether it be all the features or or just or just just a few of them. So I think that's that, that's really important. Uh, we're seeing quite a few questions yeah. coming in as well. Sorry, Sender. No, oh, I just wanted to say that uh, we have some like we have like dig digital teachers on each schools and uh, a few on each school, and they just have a they have a course did all the teachers and they, they just present it, and the teachers themselves note uh, down what they want to do and want to use. That's how we did it in Laric, at least. And I yeah. think that's that is just very adaptable. Like like I said, we've got quite a few questions coming in. Quite a lot of specific questions to your own environment, so we might not have time to answer those today. But but rest assured, we we will take note of those and make sure that the local teams uh, connect with you on on those uh, specific questions. I would encourage you if you get any questions, of course, directly for Dan or Cinder, please to to pop pop them into the comments. Um, while we wait for some of those to come in, I, I do have another few questions. If if that's okay. Um, so we've, we've heard a lot of good things. It's, it seemed very easy. Teachers are loving it. Um, you know, we're seeing an impact as well in in the, the student outcomes. But also, there must have been challenges. There must have been roadblocks that you had to to overcome. Uh, I'm sure there must have been. It, it can't all be plain sailing. So I'm just keen to hear. You know what those were, how you overcame them, and I guess you know faced with similar challenges again. Would you approach them differently, or is there things that you wish you knew back then before you started that you, that you know now? I think uh, um, wish I'd known differently was taking the time to really understand the difference between um, Jamf Pro and Jamf School, and understanding what's what's okay. right for you um, as a as a multi academy trust. Maybe we set up some of our groups and profiles in the wrong place that we've needed a few little tweaks and things as we've been going along but it's not hindered anything it's not stopped anything it's just mm -hmm. uh, found a way to make it even easier as we've been using it more and more more and more to go ahead um and something that we did quite learn just as a as, as a, a natural learning curve as well i think was only having the class teacher as a, as a primary school so our children oh. do only have the one teacher only having the teacher assigned to the classroom um in jump so if there are restrictions and things that need to go in place and say a teacher was um going to, had gone to a meeting or something and forgotten to to reset right. the restrictions and then the <laughs> children were a class and not able so just kind of looking at the way that the setup needs to work within you know having some teams or some additional support staff that maybe are in there to support them um and some of those little setup background things but that will be different from school to school there isn't I don't think there's a right or wrong way to do it it's just understanding those little tweaks that you need to make as you go along to make it work for you and that's the adaptability of it as well it's not a it's not a blanket here you go this is how you do it yeah um, what's right for you so that flexibility of the product is great yeah absolutely it's uh, so many uh, different schools like we have 19 schools in Larvik and uh, each of the schools have each their own settings and, and or needs to be set uh, on each location uh, mostly um, and uh, what I remember is uh, is the apps it's so many apps hundreds of apps <laughs> uh, and and to try like try to have uh, most control over where where is the apps going to be deployed at to what grades what schools yeah. uh, that's the main main difficulty uh i think and uh yeah and it's some like it's so many settings then you then you then you have this big project and it's uh many settings because you need all the settings you need to have them in different mm. scenarios and uh, it's like to know which ones is to set on and which ones to not uh, touch right now 
is uh, kind of difficult. So it's always some fine tuning uh, when you go live uh, that needs to be done. But uh, yeah. And what's the a good, uh, good community? So, yeah. yeah it's Sorry, good. I was, I was, the age of your students, do, do you go from primary right through to the to second to high school as well? Uh, primary to to second, so first to se seventh grade in yeah here yeah, Norway. Yeah, and do you do you, you do you use like a corset of applications and then use like the student app as your as your sort of a self service kind of app store your repository where you where you make other yeah. apps available? Yeah, mostly like we have we have a, a corset uh, with uh -huh. Google app, uh, apps. And and uh, we have first to third grade do have specific core apps just for them to learn uh, to to uh, yeah words and and write and then yeah uh, above that is uh, mostly the core apps and the the, the plus uh, yeah and we and we make in that we make the teachers as Dan said uh, uh, said. Uh, that uh, we make available a few apps for the teachers to be able to like then they have a class hour uh, we want to use this app but that student doesn't have this app installed on their ipad because we just use it for this lesson um, the teachers just click on that and install it to all the student ipads in their class and use it for that session and uh, it gets uh, uninstalled so there's like so no interruption. Made, yeah. Yeah. So we have made more apps available for yeah, specific installation instead of just have it installed on every iPad. Got you. Yeah, and, and obviously saves a lot of space doing that, you know, quite quickly yeah. devices can can get can get filled up. Um so I'm conscious of time, so looking at some last questions. Um I guess what advice would you give any other IT teams or educational leaders looking to to either maybe reinvigorate an existing program as, as in many cases, you know, a, a lot of people using iPad out there at the moment um, maybe needs a bit of a bit of a, a bit of a boost, or maybe there's people embarking on these journeys for, for the first time. What, what would your sort of one piece of advice be? Would you say? I would probably say uh, when we went to start our <clears throat> rollout program, because we didn't go complete one to one in the first year, um, we built yeah. it up over a couple of years. And a lot of people who were a few years ahead on their journey than we were um, said they started with the older students because they'd get it better and then worked their way down, um, which didn't really make too much sense to us. So we went straight in with mm -hmm. our, our, our year one and year two. So that's five, six year olds and built up from built up from there and they, yeah. they get it fine um the really important thing to do then is make sure that you dedicate some time to teaching those children exactly how to use the device that you're giving them it's in the same way that you teach children to use a pencil before you ex expect amazing writing from them you need to teach them how to use that device all those real functions of it looking at the control center and everything else and all those accessibility features in particular um just to empower them and really give them the ownership of the work that they're doing and and know which tools that they want to pick at the right moment my devices have uh, most control and have a I have a spreadsheet the apps which grades needs which apps and to have it updated and and be ready uh, so you then you start the project you can just you you uh, it, apps makes a lot of noise when people are missing apps uh so um <laughs> make them available or or have it already pushed out before the before everyone gets and um, enrolled the, their ipad in the new and then amazing amazing i'm just looking at some of the questions um in terms of uh, that's why i touch on professional development i mean dan you mentioned like the apps that you didn't actually need to do much around the apps specifically but just thinking more in more general terms around you know bringing technology into any classroom or any institution you know, you're, you're probably going to have those teachers that are maybe less confident or less yeah 
shall we yeah. say, uh, less kind of bought into it than others. I mean, how do you how do you bring them on board? What what sort of strategies have you used to? The first thing you do. That? The first thing is ban the phrase technophobe. Um, <laughs> that's not allowed to be used. Not allowed. Uh, okay. <laughs> and, and education. I think it's naturally one of those one of those one of those industries where the people working in the industry really care about the children that they're working with and mm. are there for that reason. As soon as you make your why really clear to them that it's not about the technology, it's about yes. improving the education and the learning opportunity for the people in front of us. This is how we're going to do it. That very, very quickly changes the mindset. Um, we were really lucky to work with a, an Apple professional learning specialist early on who who spoke with us around the, the universal design for learning approach to using technology mm -hmm. within and with our removing barriers to learning approach and want for what we were trying to do, it just it just meshed with ah yes, this is really why we're doing it. Let's let's all get on board with this. Um so we probably did more training and professional development around understanding the concept of yeah. you know, giving students the opportunity of choice in the classroom, removing those barriers for learning, empowering children to, you know, to find their own way and investigate different routes than we did about using the technology. We mm -hmm. spent we we really spread out any of the 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 training on the technology over over three years. So in year one, we just looked at using two of those native Apple apps. That's all the CPD is going to be on those two. We're not looking at anything else. Let's just really get to know all the features of these. Let's explore them in the classroom. Let's share best practice, what's working well. Let's share when it doesn't go right, because that's just as just as powerful for teachers to learn from. Um, Absolutely. And gave permission. I think that's a really big thing, making sure that teachers know that they've got permission to just to give things a go in the classroom. And if it doesn't, if it doesn't go right and it all goes horribly wrong, that's all right. We'll pick it up again next time. We'll work, we'll work it out there and then. That's fine. Um, because that's when you they have those, oh, I've just worked out I can do this, or this worked well with this child that I didn't think it would. And all that innovation starts to happen naturally and you you your professional development is is just there and it runs itself for you in a way once you've put that time in. But really making sure teachers understand the why, why are we doing this? Mm -hmm. Not, it's not about yep. the technology, it's the technology making it possible. Comes back to that purpose, yeah, absolutely. Makes a lot of sense, yeah. I like the fact that it's not, it's not forced or it's not intense like training at the start and then we don't do it again for ages. It's, yeah, I like the idea of just focusing on a few, a few little things and, and having that, having that kind of safe environment that things might not always work, things might fail sometimes. So it, it does make sense. Sender, from from your point of view, from a technical point of view, did was there any sort of barriers from moving from one system that's not jammed to another how did you find that transition have you leveraged any of the maybe the online training that we offer we obviously do certifications as well how did you find that from your perspective or indeed anyone that was within your team that that how we ended up the jam for you you think or in terms of just yeah in terms of like learning a new system so as, a, as an administrator of course there will be uh, it's, it's similarities, uh, but things are very different. Yeah, yeah. Well. Uh, uh, it was very different from uh, the previous MDM we used. Uh, so it it took a lot of time to like see see uh, and remember like how things are moved and how where do policies are not like uh, set on the user but on devices and the device groups. Uh, and it was a kind of different approach, but uh, you get the hang of it. It's like the, every system. You in the beginning, it's it's different, it's weird, and then you get uh, used to it and you understand it, and it's uh, no problem. So, uh, but uh, yeah, but um, I, I want to point out that one of the main reasons Jamf was good for us was the uh, the Jamf parent. We saw in in Norway at least uh, yes. that the that the parents need to have a control of the device when the uh, students come home from school and we didn't have that and we, we we needed that it was time it was 2024 we needed the parents to have need to have power over the device and can block block safari block block uh, the ipad totally um yeah and have control and we, yeah, we, miss, really uh, we were missing that. 
Yeah, the so, jump rates, uh, dumb. Yeah, it's such a it's a, such a hot topic, really. You know, around screen time in general and how much time children are spending on front of technology at school or technology at home. And I think giving parents something in their locker that uh, helps control that in an easy way, as Jamf Parent does, uh, has been, yeah, I'd say probably in the last few years, it's it's really, although it's been around for a lot longer, it's really sort of um, gained in popularity, I think because of the, the kind of wider context of society and, and, and where we're living at the moment. And, how did you how did you get parents to was it easy to get them to adopt to using it or did you how, what what sort of strategies did you use to sort of raise awareness of it first and foremost and yeah uh so uh, the digital teachers made a, a a presentation and a document on how to use it and uh, uh, gave the opportunity to all the parents it's not a, like you need to use it it's just like to, uh, so the parents can take it and use the child parent if they want to have that control. It's, it's we just need the, the option. Then the parent comes to us and asks yeah. for uh, yeah Being. permission and the access to control the device. We can give out the documentation on how to how to do that. And here you can have total control. And uh, but yeah. We, we sent out to all the parents that uh, here, this is how we can do it. If you want to have control, you can do it this way. And there was a follow up question from the audience there, uh, directed at you, Cinder. Did you use the QR code or have you imported the parents as, into user groups? Did, or did you use this scanned QR code method? Yeah, we used the QR code, the scan, scan QR code. So, yeah. So we have blocked the uh, job block the child parent on students devices, on student devices. Yeah. yeah and the uh, parent uh, or yeah and just there was an earlier question i saw a while back about parents i was pick up on that someone asked if it was available for mac now we in java school we did used to have a web application which we as we as we call we sunsetted that because Basically, the reason was it wasn't widely used. It, it, the usage was was very very small, and most people tended to to do it through the application. Uh, it's certainly something we can we can speak to the product team about if it's if it's something that's on the roadmap. But given that we've sort of removed that web functionality, it's, it's probably probably unlikely. So as Matt rejoins us, I will I will probably end with one last question. And 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 Matt, feel free to get your, get your perspective on this as well. So looking ahead, what emerging trends or technologies in general don't need to be jam specific things, of course, do you see as having the biggest potential in terms of transforming education? Uh, the iOS 18 did the uh, AI integrated uh, will be pretty exciting uh, to see how how the education scene will develop in the years to come did the uh, AI now integrated into the Apple devices, Apple intelligence. Yeah. That's that's for me. Yeah, I'd have I'd have to go AI as well <laughs> at the moment. <laughs> kind of had a feeling. <laughs> but I'll 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 jump back to the point I said earlier about when we gave the, the students the iPad, it was very much about making sure that you teach them to use it so they understand the how it works for mm -hmm. them. I think that's really important to do with AI as well, because whilst it's got some great tricks and some wow features, if they don't know what it is that's giving them the, the, that answer or how they yeah. get into the answer and realize it's actually just data and things that they're pulling back, um, they need to really understand how that works. And I think it's important that we teach, we you know, we, we spend the time and dedicate the time to teach them what AI is and how, how it all works, as well as some of the amazing things that they can do with it. I think for me, I think for me, Craig, it's, Having come from a background where I supported schools with the with the setup over the last decade or so, I think it's more to to Dan and Sindra's point around it's about learning and teaching, um, and that that change from it being a technology deployment um, meeting technology needs mm -hmm. to a meeting end user needs and making sure they have the right device 
to meet their needs and not just putting technology in there because of price or because of any of those factors, but actually understanding what are we trying to achieve as a curriculum? What are the accessibility needs we, we need to put in place so that every single user can access this? Because I think, and having worked with, with Dan before, in order to get equity across that teaching and learning rollout, every teacher needs to buy into this. This can't be about lovers of technology, haters of technology, any of that. It can't be about IT admins. It can't be about teachers. It has to be about meeting absolutely everybody's needs. And and whilst we think about that as being you know, a device choice, it, it's the device choice plus the support systems that go around that as well. And I think what, what we hear when Dan and Sindra talk is, you know, we're seeing that from both a technical and teaching point of view. And that's the critical thing going forward. Like we, we talk about it, Craig, we've had this conversation. Mm -hmm. uh, COVID has accelerated a lot of these discussions because people had to do things. And I think the successful deployments are now looking at what worked during those times. How did students interact with those devices and how do we get teachers more on board so that we can continue to build on those things and it not be about, you know, un unfortunately, the, the device choice. I think some some schools are still thinking that it has to be a keyboard because that's the next logical step or it has it, and it's not that. It's like, what is the teaching and learning outcome that students need to have, not necessarily the technology skills. So, yeah, I think the other two said it perfectly. I've just kind of reiterated what they said. <laughs> <laughs> no, thanks for your comments, Matt. Yeah, I don't think AI would be a would be a common answer for, for that one, but I didn't want to make any assumptions. But gentlemen, I appreciate your time. We're, we're almost at, at the hour. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, thanks to Matt for your presentation and Cinder and, and Dan, thank you so much for your for your insights and your attendance today. Uh, as I say, on the question side, we, we a lot of specific questions about people's specific uh, environments. Rest assured, we can export those questions. We will follow up with you. We'll get the local teams to follow up to make sure that get an answer to those questions uh, so i appreciate everyone for your attending today thanks again to our speakers and thanks to all of you for your participation have a great day thank you thank you